Hello. Hello, hello. What's up, dude? Not much. Uh, how's your day going? I'm going good. Got through work nice and easy, and ready to do fun stuff now. Yeah. yeah hell yeah. Fuck yeah. That's good. That sounds good. Uh, getting enough work always feels uh, feels really good. I I I, uh, I was about to say I miss those days. <laughs> <laughs> but stream, streaming, like I don't know. Sometimes it's like work, but sometimes it's not. So it's a, it's, it's, it's a full time job. Yeah, I know. It's 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 fun though. It definitely has its moments where it's it's just it's super fun. Yeah, every job has its ups and downs. Yeah, as I was just thinking back, like when I used to work at a restaurant, like my favorite time of day was when shift was over, and I was just driving home, and I always had the biggest smile on my face. I was like, "Fuck yeah!" Then I got the rest yeah. of the night to just relax and hill and ch and you know chill and hang out and everything. Oh yeah. But uh, anyways, about, talking about StarCraft. Um, How's uh, your gameplay going right now? What league are we talking about? And uh, uh, all that stuff. So I am now in like Plat 3 MMR. I just had a real bad streak. Uh, okay. But I don't know if I'd say that was like... I, I don't know if I'd call that like a problem. Uh, I was just playing bad that day and kept going. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I got back playing the next day, I was right back to where I was, kept playing better. So, so far good. Right now, I'm still in Plat 3, but I plan to get better. Okay, um, nice. Uh, what uh, I don't uh, if you said this already, sorry. But uh, what race are you talking about? What, what race are you playing? Yeah. Zerg. Okay. Yeah, nice, nice and easy. Okay, I got, I got a lot of things to tell you. <laughs> um, so do you have a, a replay handy, or do you want to talk about replay, uh, or do you want to do some more? I sent more you two replays in the email. Okay, I, I can, uh, I, I can, I can grab it. It's all good. No worries. Yeah. Uh, all right. One second. And then, yeah, like I said, my current best uh, opponent is Terran. I had the best win rate versus them. Uh, so I don't really want to talk about, like, hey, how do I deal with Thors and Battlecruisers, which is what both of these were. It's more like, how do I handle the early games so I can prevent them from getting to the mm -hmm. being maxed out That's, on late right. game stuff? You already have the right mindset because yeah. the early game setup is what bases everything for the late game. And if your early game is weak, you're going to always have a weak late game. It never goes... Like the way I, the way I was, uh, the, like the, the, the line I give people, which is very real, is you can have a strong early game, and a weak late game, but you cannot have a weak early game and a strong late game. It doesn't exist. If your early game is weak, the entire like as soon as your game ever goes into the weak territory, the rest of the game is weak, uh, because yeah. it just sets the pace for everything. All right. So I will. Uh, the easiest way to do this to make your life easier is I'm gonna share my screen with you on Discord. Perfect. So that you can just like straight up see with no stream delay because there's no way I can get around it. There always has yeah. to be a little bit of stream delay with my stream. But now you got none because Discord's instantaneous. Yep. Uh, so yeah. And, and uh, another thing I like to tell people just to make you feel more comfortable about interrupting me. If you ever have a question and I'm like mid-sentence, please feel free to cut me off. I do not care. Uh, get, your, get your question out if you have one. That way you don't let me finish and then be like, ah, oh, shit, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, All right, sounds good. Yeah, and then I'll obviously I'll have this uploaded as a VOD when it's over too, so you can always go back and watch it again if you ever feel like it's information overload. Perfect. I probably will. Good luck. <laughs> All right. And, uh, beat so let's see what you're doing. So, uh, are you? I just to ask you a question real quick too before we really get into it. Are you doing B to GM or are you kind of just doing your own thing? Uh, mostly B to GM. I've started trying to add in things like spellcasters recently, and I definitely feel like I have overcommitted on like attention requirement uh -huh. to that uh -huh. so i like my macro slides when i try and do that um i think in these games i prioritize just doing the bdgm build a bit more okay um but it's been like five days since i last played them so i might be remembering wrong that's fine it's all good i would definitely say uh micro is not your friend in platinum league and in anything no, that not. anything that requires you to micro is only gonna and the reason why it's not your friend is because if you're like your macro 100% has to be something you can do while not using your brain to think about it. You have to you have to drill macros so fucking hard into yourself that it's just it's literally hand muscle memory. And then you can start microing because your hand will still do the actions of macro while you're thinking about how do I micro now. But if you if you don't like at least that's the concept, right? It's what you want to be. It's obviously not ever going to be exactly like that. There's always going to be some type of learning curve. But uh, yeah, no. If you're if you're still like flopping around with your macro, like not super solidified, and then you're trying to micro as well, it's only gonna like 
slow down your learning process, in my opinion, to a point where it's, it's going to just take longer to improve. And you'll be that's the kind of guy that'll be stuck in platinum for like a year or like uh, however long, super long time. Uh, uh, do you have any suggestions on how to like drill that micro or that macro? Uh, I'm about to tell you a lot. Up. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> keep going. Sorry, oh, but I, I mean cut you drilling off. specifically. Like, uh, we can go through the vod itself and see where I'm going wrong, but actually like practicing it. What's a good efficient way to actually improve that? I think it's just games. Just... It's just it's just like having the right I, like, yeah, like having the having a plan and the the right idea when you go into a game about like what is a priority right now. It's like, like, really, it's just understanding what your priorities are. And if you know that, and you really try to have repetition to execute those priorities, all you will get is faster at doing them. Like, uh, it's it's just like, there's, in, at StarCraft 2, at any point in time, when the game, we're, we're talking in, like, the game is at a point where, like, let's say both players have three or four bases active. At any point in time, there's always, like, 15 things you could be doing. And you're like, okay, well, I could do this or this. I'll move that overlord over there. I can move this zergling over here. I could make my resources here. I could it, move my larva, whatever. There's always so much shit you could be doing. But if you just know what are, like, the the monumental, most important tasks that need to be, like, babysat as much as possible, as long as you don't disrupt that, you can do the priorities first and then do the, the little tedious shit after. But then as long, you have to always make sure you never disrupt your priority. So you always like will go back to the priority. Go back to the priority. Because in StarCraft 2, it is a game of repetition. So your priority literally needs to be something you're focusing on. Like multiple times a minute every minute. Like we're talking when I say multiple times, I mean probably like 15 times a minute. Like many times a minute. So it's yeah, yeah it's just it, I'll make sure you really like throughout the game I'll really explain like what I think your priorities are and what it sh what you should be doing. Gotcha. Uh, but so far, great job. <laughs> you moved the overlord, you made a drone. And you didn't fuck up your overlord timing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, I hope this isn't one where I forget to make my spawning pool. Yeah. No, it's all good. Uh, I mean, if it happens, it happens, right? So, so far, great job on stacking mineral patches. I've noticed you're attempting to stack patches. That Keep doing that. You'll only get better at it the more you do it. So, good shit. I, uh, I love to see it. One of the biggest things I, I hate is when someone is genuinely like AFK and... Uh, they're doing nothing because all that's going to do is give them a shitty rhythm as well of just like doing like it just shows me the person literally just does nothing throughout the game and that's going to make create a very slow macro overall um so good job on that the only thing you're doing wrong so far is you are uh or what you could have done is when you, if you ever pull off a drone off the mineral line something super simple you can do is if you give a command to a drone that has minerals in its hand in you could do the same thing with gas by the way if it has resources in its hand, you could you could do whatever command you want it to do, as long as it's not building a building. So, for instance, you could say, move down to the natural, down here, right here. And then you could say, uh, actually, sorry, uh, I was going to word it wrong. Let me uh, let me start over, because I was about to give you bad advice. All Are I you talking about delivering the, the metal yeah, 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 yeah. So it would, yeah. yeah, it would just... Normally I do that. I think I just yeah. panic because I was it would receive, building it would, too many. It would resume the command you gave it before if, it were, if you're telling it to, like, mine a patch, for instance. If you said return cargo and you said mine patch, return cargo, it would go and mine this patch after it returned cargo. But if you said go here, return cargo, it would return cargo and then start mining patches up here again. So, yeah, just... You get the point. Returning cargo is nice. It's kind of a waste to not do it. Uh, it's super easy, too, if you just hit the button for C for return cargo. Otherwise... Very small. We don't have to talk about it for very long. It's uh, pretty minor overall for like the general focus of what we should be looking at here. Uh, okay, B to GM wise, this is not B to GM already. Your gas way too fucking early. And if you take your early gas, it fucks the entire build. Uh, this is yeah. massive. You sh your gas should be at 20 supply after the pool if you're doing B to GM. Gotcha. And yeah, I have done a little bit off where I get this. Yeah, and your pool's way... Just because I really like... Oh, good, sorry. I like how it lines up perfectly where everything arrives at the correct time where so this, like, I don't end up over capped. Yeah, this is going to be a speedling expand type of a thing where you will be able to start queens right as your hatcheries finish together and uh, your gas will be up and the only way you'll have three out of three drones on the gas right away when it's up is if you pull off the mineral line which is would create a faster zergling speed or if you wanted to fill it up gradually you could make your drones uh, 17, 18, 19 out of the hatchery and fill it up like drone one so drone 17 would be in the gas like right as it's done drone 18 would be in the gas probably like four seconds after it's done 
and drone 19 would be in the gas probably like 14 seconds after it's done. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what I've been doing. Yeah, so that would be a situation where um, you're going to get gas still... You're going to get 100 gas still pretty fucking fast. Like, before... You're going to have 100 gas in the bank before your queen is ad done out of the hatchery. So, like, it's it's just going to give you more than you need, essentially, like, early on. When you'd be... Like, what the thing we're doing that's important to understand is, is you're doing a mineral-focused build pretty heavily right now. Uh, everything you're making up until about, like, four minutes is mineral cost, mineral cost, mineral cost, mineral cost. Uh, the only exception is a layer, but the thing is, and uh, is if your pool is at 18 supply and if your gas is at 20 supply and you fill up the gas with three drones, right? As the gas is done, you're going to be taking drones off of a oversaturated mineral line to do that. And then you're going to create a situation where you have a hundred gas exactly in the bank, right? As your queen finishes out of the hatchery, which is enough to make your layer. And then you do nothing with your gas anymore until your layer is done which means you're going back to 100% mineral focused build things. And when you oversaturate a mineral line, which is what you'd be doing if you did the build out the way I was talking about it, where you delay your gas and you even delay your pool a little bit longer than you did just by like a one drone, uh, you get a 100% larva spin rate where like you don't delay it ever because you're not saving for a pool and a gas. Because if you notice, watch this, when you build your gas in your pool, your hatchery has a larva on it right now, but you can't spend it because you're saving for a gas in a pool right now. And then again, this is a speedling expand. And now your hatchery has two larvae on it, which means you're not spending either of these larvae yet because you were saving for a gas in a pool. Now you will spin them later, but again, they're not going to go to the mineral line. They're going to go to the gas. And oversaturating your mineral line still gives the drone that is oversaturated efficiency that is above zero. So it's still giving you more minerals as a... Let's say it's like a little bit of a mineral surplus that you're getting because your build is mineral focused. You're not doing really anything with gas in this build as a priority. You're not all inning the guy is essentially what I'm saying. You're not doing like a timing attack. You're doing a defensive macro build that is designed to get you a good economy fast and max out fast. And those kinds of builds are always mineral focused builds. And if you're not going to do a timing attack, it has zero purpose to prioritize gas, which is why I was saying your gas is too early because now it's disrupting your minerals a lot. So what's the supply it should be? It's 20 supply for the gas and 18 for the pool? Yes. Is that right? Yep. Okay. I'm writing that down then. <clears throat> Alright. And then, uh, yeah. It'll just help with uh, giving you more money, essentially. And that's what you need overall to make this build flow really well. Okay. And then if a marine attacks you like this, definitely just go to the cliff. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, you're making your queens right away. And now, see, this is what I'm talking about, too, where your queens are 10 seconds out of 36 in production, and you already have enough gas to make a layer. That's why this this kind of a build is a speedling expand kind of a build, because what are you going to do with that gas? You can't get burrow, nor would I want you to get burrow. You can't get overlord speed, nor do I really want you to get overlord speed either. The only thing you can get is zergling speed right now that's the only thing you like you can't get a layer either because your queen is like the, the queen being in production means nothing else can happen right now so you can't do anything with your hatchery at the moment uh it's just it's just gonna neither with this hatchery either because and you should be making a queen too i definitely would not say oh make a layer before a queen that's super bad larva is your biggest priority here so this queen means you're gonna get larva faster because it's gonna start injecting your hatcheries with larva so that's good it's just you have a gas bank now that you can't spend, which means your build is starting to go in the inoptimal route, uh, which is why we how we described earlier. Yeah, I think I misunderstood the original videos on the build, and so I did start getting like uh, link speed just to be able to scout with them and send them to find expansions. Yeah, you definitely don't uh, want to do that. I would say definitely like this is the diamond level shit right here, and this is because like so if you're gonna go zergling speed, and then you're gonna go mass riches, it makes no sense. The old like now. I will, there's two ways this, this happens, okay? And one of them is advanced, and one of them is basic. The advanced one that you shouldn't be focusing on right now is you can open up with the Zergling Speed build every game because it is something that is called a macro branch build. And what that means is is that if you imagine like a tree and the Zergling Speed is like the tree trunk of the tree, 
Roaches could be a branch that evolves off of that tree because you scouted roaches would be a good idea as a reaction. That is advanced. That is something that like masters players or like high diamond players should be doing. Or at least bare minimum diamond should be doing. Like this is something that requires a scout and a reaction and a logical uh, like uh, build that follows. But if your build is going to be automated, which is what platinum is, Platinum is literally just trying to maximize your economy, which is what this is not doing now. Um, that, if your build is always going, no matter what you see or what you scout, if you're just going to go, okay, well, I'm always going to go roaches now. This is going to slow down your roaches. Like, a lot. Uh, so Yeah, that's four yeah. roaches, the, the gas. I just, well, I just it, wasted. So that's, that, that's, that's just only a part of it. Not only is it four roaches that you just wasted, but it's fucked your larva already early on. It's slowed down your mineral income because, again, 16 out of 16 is not perfect income. Like, it's not like... or it, It's it's ideal income for a proper split among all mineral lines. But you can actually have mineral efficiency up to 24 out of 16. You can Because, again, there's eight patches. And each patch can have efficiency with three drones. So having oversaturation actually increases your mineral income. Like, with, with the initial part. Now, I would never say stay at... 20 out of 16 and have this base be at 1 out of 16 because everything that is above 16, so 17, 18, 19, all the way to 24, they get less efficiency than 100%, but more than zero. I would say drones on close patches get about 20% efficiency and drones on far patches get about 50% efficiency in terms of like how often they're actually mining the patch. It's still more than zero. So it's still, and more than zero means you're getting more minerals. You're just getting more money in, in the bank account. And again, your whole build is based off of minerals. And then this, this uh, Zergling Speeder here too is minerals as well. And what this is going to do to you is it's going to fuck your larva up. And you're going to always have larva sitting at the hatcheries. And it's going to make it hard. And it's going to make it, it's just going to make it harder for you to make like your third queen and your layer and spend your larva. Do all the things on time with your build. And like the third queen is supposed to be the guy who spreads creep. So it's going to slow your creep down. It's going to slow down everything that is mineral focused. The only thing that is gas focused is your roaches. And then a big concept that you need to, and everybody else in your situation will eventually understand. If you're going roaches or if you're going hydras, you can actually make more money out of a base that is fully saturated faster than you can spend it off of a hatchery that generates larva. So if, if for the, what the, this is important to know this because if you have not prioritized your gas early on and you only start prioritizing it once you're done with your drones, which are mineral only units, and now you want to start making gas units, you can mine gas faster than you spend it off of each base that mines a base. Does that include injects or is it just this includes injects. generation? It includes injects. Okay. So a lot of people don't think about it like that. A lot of people think, oh, I want to make gas stuff, so i got to get a gas bank. I need gas early because I need gas stuff. And you only need gas. The only reason why you mine gas early game uh, with the B2G and build the way it's set up is you mine. That's why it's 20 gas is because it gives you exactly enough gas to have exactly what you need once you have your mineral expenses out there, which is your queen has now spawned out of the hatchery. And now... Right as your queen spawns out of the hatchery, you just hit 100, which means you can now make a layer. And then that layer okay. can then set you up to do other things that will eventually lead you to more gas later. But again, you're not taking gas super fast at like the natural or anything like that. It's literally just mostly mineral stuff. Because the, the build is so heavy on high supply, and high supply means lots of overlords. It means lots of queens injecting hatcheries. It means lots of hatcheries being injected. And it means lots of drones affording all of this. And all of those things are all mineral cost. They have no gas cost. The only thing that has a gas cost is your military and your upgrades for your military, which comes after the fact. It's not the first. It's that. It's it, so like that right there too, right here. So you're you're okay. I think what you're your problem right now is you're doing two builds at the same time. You're doing a speedling build expand and you're doing a beta gym build. This is speedling expand. This is speedling expand. This is speedling expand. Your creep tumor, your early gas, and your speedling investment. These are all speedling expand style things. <laughs> I imagine the fourth queen is also part of that. Um, you should never be making a fourth queen like this. I'm not gonna lie. 
This should never be happening. Uh, okay. So, but basically, if you were doing a proper speedling build, okay, everything you've done up to this point is mostly fine. The only difference is, is when you're at like 27 to 30 supply, probably more like around like 27, you should have taken this hatchery at your third base. And then you should make a creep tumor so that you can have two spreads of the tumor by the time your third's done. So that as soon as your third's done and your saturated mineral line is saturated, you can now saturate this mineral line and guard it. That is a speedling expand. That is why you spread a creep tumor like that. But if you're going to go for a beta gym build, this should have been an inject, not a creep tumor. And you should have been pumping drones like crazy. You do not spread creep over inject with a two base tech build. You only sp the, the whole purpose of this creep tumor is to guard drones at a third base because you're taking a fast third. It's the only reason why you take that creep tumor right there. Never, ever, ever prioritize creep over inject if you're not going to take a super fast third. So that's why I'm saying you're doing two builds at once because now this is another thing where the gas slowed you down, the speedling investment slowed you down, and now the lack of larva is slowing you down because you're just not injecting your hatchery. Gotcha. Nice placement on your overlord. Uh, a lot of people fucked that up, but good job. Always oh, remember. Yeah, I've lost many yeah. to that. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. I'm, I'm glad you know. You made another queen. Okay. Nice. So this queen can spread creep. That's good. It's your third queen. And now, okay, so now another problem you're having with your build is, is now you have a moment where if you compared the build you're doing right now to a beta GM build, this would be a moment where you might set, tell yourself, and this happens to a lot of people, vibe, in your series, whenever, like, no one really seems to attack you, but every time someone attacks me, when I try to do your build, I die. Oh, because what you're doing to yourself yeah. right now is you're creating a, a hole in your defense where you could literally die if someone did a timing attack to you in any way, whether it be Hellions, whether it be uh, fucking, like, some weird-ass, like, bio push, anything really. If this, was, if this is how you play against Zerg, like, like a lot of speedling attack or some shit. What is happening to you right now is when you make your first queens and you inject your first hatchery, okay? So your queen spawns and ideally you inject the hatchery like this. What's supposed to happen is your first inject pops off the hatchery. Your forces are under attack. And then all that larva that spawns is expensive and you spend it all. And it's the second you spend it all, you make your Roach Warren and your Evo Chamber. That is when you make those. And this should also be when your layer has already been started. And why this is important is because a layer is a longer build time than a Roach Warren. So if you make a layer first and then you make a Roach Warren a little bit after, you can time it to where the buildings finish around the same time. And if the buildings finish around the same time, a Roach Warren can start Roach Speed when you have a layer. So you can actually start the immediate layer upgrade off of a layer on a Roach Warren right when it's done. So that's when the, that's where timing of buildings is important about how you take the, the, the build here. And if you don't have a, like again, you should have a, all your larvae should be spent right now and you should be starting a Roach Warren and a Evo Chamber. And we'll, like, let's just see how long goes by before you start these buildings from now. And every second that goes by is more time that you could easily fucking die to like Hellbats or Hellions or a lot of different types of pressure. So you started a, a Roach Warren about almost a minute after the fact. Uh, to be fair, I would say you started the Roach Warren about 45 seconds late or maybe 50 seconds late. And the reason why I'm giving you a little bit of time back there is because you actually did make your spawning pool a little early. Just like, like not, honestly, like 50 seconds is fair out of, instead of a minute, because it, I would definitely not say this was 10 seconds too early. It was only a few seconds too early, but in general, this rich one is insanely fucking late, super fucking late. And you're, if you get attacked, this is when you die. Because those roaches that you're supposed to be making are supposed to be able to be started right as your natural's finished, being saturated. So the, the, the timing of how this is supposed to operate is your main is fully saturated, 
your natural is fully saturated. And the second your natural is fully saturated with gas, gas, and mineraline. So you have 22 on this base. And you have a third started, like starting right then. You are already starting your roaches. So your roaches should be starting. Like It's not like, oh, well, I had larvae sitting there for 40 seconds and then I made roaches. Like... The second your droning is done, the roach horn's finishing, and then dro roaches start being made up to, like, six or eight of them so that you don't die to timing attacks. So you can't do that right now. So the only the, the only real uh, option you have is to over-drone and be really risky about dying right now. Otherwise, your larva is just going to sit there, which is... And your larva is sitting there, too, which is really bad. You never want that to happen. This is why... I'm telling you right now... If you ever wanted my honest opinion why people are in Platinum or anyone who is in Gold League or, or Silver or Bronze, this is 100% why. If you ever have Larva sitting there, the, and, it, and if, if, if Larva on your hatchery ever hits three, that is very bad. And if Larva on your hatchery ever goes above three, that is unacceptably awful. That is like even worse than bad. It's just like... That is fucking... You should honestly feel like you should... I wish there was, like, a, a way I could make a, a, like, a code for the game to where if your larva ever went above three, like, if it went to, like, four or five or six or whatever, it would just give you a defeat screen. You would just lose the game. And you'd be like, wait, what? Why did I lose? What the fuck? I'm not even dead. Your larva went to four in this hatchery, though. Oh, wait, what? That, that's that bad? Yeah, you, it means you just lose the game. Because this is fucking awful for your macro. So this needs to be respected a lot more than it is right now. And um, I feel like what that tells me too, this is, it, it creates a sign in your macro and this is where muscle memory comes from. And it makes me feel like you do not. And I know you're supply blocked right now. And uh, right now also you have no overlords in production. Uh, so this is going to be a long time as well that you're going to continue to be supply blocked here with a lot of larvae there. Unless you make like eight overlords at once or something. But this tells me that you don't pay attention enough to macro cycles. And there was, that, there might have been like a something. What, what attacked your creep a second ago? Let's, let's I want to see what it was. Something might have distracted you. Was I think it, it was a hellion. Yeah. So one hellion was here, right? And this should not be something you should care about. And you want to know why? Roaches should already be out right now. Like, if this, what should be happening right now instead is you should go. Oh, there is a thing attacking me over there. I don't even have to look at it on the screen. I can go like this. Select the army and move towards the dot, the dot on the minimap. It'll go to that area and go back to my macro. Look at my supply. Look at my hatcheries. Make sure my injects are rolling. Creep spread. That should be your priority right now. Not microing your queens on the hillion. Because if you're not going to touch the larva, it you have 12 larvae right now. And again, you're not making an overlord. So you are going to have this larva for a long fucking time. And it just tells me that you're just not macroing anymore. You're ceasing to macro. Oh my gosh, they're attacking our creep tumors. And the, now you have now you, you went up to 19 larvae right there, and now you're st so you're you opened up a little bit of supply when your third finished, and you made a couple larva, but you still haven't made an overlord. And there we go. Now you're making four overlords after your drones. Now this is pretty huge. Okay, so the reason why I was so severe on the whole like you should lose the game thing if you ever go up to any more than four larva is because you're going to hit three larva consistently throughout the game because larva inject pops three larva off the hatchery. But if you're not macroing more than once every larva generation cycle from automated larva, and to elaborate on what I mean there, I'm not talking about injects. I'm talking about the one larva at a time that pops out of the hatchery. If you are not trying to spin that larva at least once every time that larva is going to spawn, that is bad. And if and one is not even good either, by the way. You should be trying to spin the larva that pops out of the hatchery one time every 10 seconds, about every two to three seconds. Genuinely. So you should be, your fingers should be going 5ST, 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 5ST. Or, uh, if, I don't know what your overlord hotkey is, mine is V. But you should be going 5SV, 5SV, 5SV. Like, watching your supply and watching your uh, watching your your larva. Because what should happen is, here's the easiest way you can tell the difference. If you go 5S make, 5S make thing, 5S make thing, you should have a peripheral vision of like, uh, like you, this should be something that you should, you should just like, 
It should be like, like if you, like for instance, let me explain it this way. Like if you like an analogy, like if you breathe in your, in your lungs right now, you're like, you're sucking a lot of air. You can like feel it and you're like, okay, I have a lot of air in my lungs. And you exhale and you're like, oh, okay. Now the air is out of my lungs and I just exhaled a lot of air out. And you can like feel the difference. There's actually a, your body can tell the difference when you have a lot of air in or when you don't have a lot of air in and there's not a lot in at all. And you should be able to tell when you have larva on the hatcheries or when you don't have larva on the hatcheries without having to look at the larva there, <clears throat> like physically on the hatchery, or without having to look at the number. And the way you can tell the difference is, is if I go, and let's say it, your, your hatchery hockey is one. If I go one select larva, make drone. One select larva, make drone. You know what's going to happen? Nothing. Like, it's going to do nothing. It's just going to have a hatchery, hatcheries on my little command card here, and nothing is going to happen. And that's fine. That's good. You know what? That, that's, the reason why that's good is because it tells you there is no larva available because you've spent it all. You're doing great. But the second you see this happen, and something fucking rotates, and now you have larva down there, and you make stuff out of it, like, there is a, a shift in the command card in the bottom of the screen and you should either be noticing it because you're looking at it or if you're looking right in the like say you're looking at the roach warren for instance like i want you to look at the roach warren on the screen right now look at the roach warren just stare at the roach warren and i'm like let's say i'm spamming suck darva suck darva suck darva suck darva suck darva nothing happening nothing happening nothing happening keep looking at the roach warren but now out of your peripheral while looking at the roach warren if i do this do you notice a shift in the bottom of the screen yeah if you do that means something happened, and it means you fucking spent the larva, and you should be noticing that all the time. That should be something you're really fixated on, like, a fucking lot with Zerg. That is a priority for Zerg. Massively. If you don't notice that ever, if you don't pay attention to that, that is a problem, and it's something you need to work on. Because that's the only way you're going to get more uh, productive with your larva. Because if you ever, if you ever do go to your larva, and you're like, holy fuck, I have a lot. This is not good. This should only be happening when you have basically like uh, you're like a big larva wave might hit if like all your hatcheries inject pop off at once and like you know once every thirty seconds you're like okay I gotta spend it uh, there, there's a lot of larva there that's fine but like this shouldn't be happening consistently and if 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 this does happen let me say it like this this makes a lot of sense if I say it this way. As soon as this happens, you had better be able to get rid of it right away because you should be able to spin it right away. And if you can't, it means your setup is bad. And if your setup is bad, it means you're not paying enough attention to it. So you need to pay more attention to the larva to make sure you're preparing for things like this. Like you're looking at your, your uh, supply and making sure you're not supply blocking. And like you got, you got to remember like every 30 seconds, you're going to get a wave every time you got to be ready for like you gotta you gotta be ready to receive a wave of larva every 30 and you gotta be able to not only that but maintain the consistency of larva coming every 10 because you get the same larva automated off of a hatchery as you do injected every 30 seconds you get three larva every 30 from an inject and you get one larva every 10 from automation so together you're getting six larva every 30 seconds so you gotta be ready for all of that and if you're not paying enough attention to it, your macro is going to suffer tremendously. Um, but about what I just said, how do, how do you feel? Do you have any, like, I mean, we'll, we'll keep going, but do you, feel, do you have any questions about what I just talked about? No. Uh, I have, like, a sideways question, sure, sure. I guess. Not That's directly fine. about that, but no it popped in my head. Um, so uh, I had a game recently where I ended up... Uh, basically it was the same problem here where I didn't balance my build correctly. I went greedy for the third, but I didn't have the lings to defend as if I were doing the speedling build. Uh -huh. um, <coughs> and then I hit that point where uh, I couldn't build roaches fast enough to match my larva because I didn't have the gas income to mirror it. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm hitting that stage, like uh, be it gas or minerals, that usually means I messed up in the build somewhere for like uh, I built a hatch when I couldn't afford to at the time, for example. Yeah. How do you, like, judge that and make the calls where it's like, okay, I can afford to make my third hatch while spending all my current uh, larva? So, uh, I feel like that's something that's harder to explain. Uh, and it's more something that experience will be the best teacher for you there. You'll, like, that's just something that you'll get more comfortable with understanding what you're capable of over time. 
there are certain simple things that uh, you can follow as a guideline at first. Like, for instance, my build that I tell you right now where I say you want to go 18 gas, 20 pool. Or, sorry, 18 pool, 20 gas. I, the gas is after the pool. I said it backwards the first time. Gas, then pool. All right, Jeff, okay. I, you, you get the point. I, <laughs> I said it fucking backwards again. But you get the point. Uh, Wait, which one's which now? Because I haven't okay. written down. Okay, you, <laughs> you want to go 18 pool, 20 okay. gas. It's Good, I have it written down right. Gas after pool with BDGM. You're not gas priorityng, you're mineral priorityng. Sorry, I said it backwards because I'm looking. I'm like your, your build's fucking me up a little bit too right now. I'm like thinking about your build. Uh, but yeah, uh, the the biggest thing that just makes sense is is when you start to become more informed with StarCraft II, you start to learn things like, okay, how much uh, resources does a Roach cost? How much resources does a Hydra cost? How much does an Ultra cost? Muta cost? Infester cost? Swarm host? Uh, Baneling? Zergling? Whatever? Ravager? Okay? Things like that. And then you also start to learn, you also will start to realize and understand things like, how much gas does one gas geyser mine per minute? How about two? How about four? How about six? How much minerals does a mineral line mine per minute that's fully saturated? You start to understand like what your economy is capable of with what things cost. And I'm not telling you that you have to do the exact math on everything. That's not at all what you have to do. It's just you can make estimations to understand what is capable out of an economy. And I'm going to tell you right now, everything that you can make off of a layer Basically, everything in the game you can make for Zerg, you can always create more minerals faster than you can spend it with every unit in, for Zerg for minerals only. Okay? So, if we're talking about an Ultra, if we're talking about a Zergling, if we're talking about a drone, if you have a fully saturated base, you can literally mine minerals faster than you can spend it with these units. You Like, you can... Uh, Okay, that's... I think I might misunderstand what you're saying. It, um, the, the, the point I'm trying to make here is... that uh, was... I don't want to make it sound confusing. Because uh, it's it, we're pairing it with, like, gas and shit. I, I'm going to start over because I don't, I don't want to make this fucking confusing. It's, it's, it's the exact same thing I said earlier, which is... You can literally mine resources faster than you can spend it. You With units you're going to make out of your larva. That's the point you're having here. Even if you take macro hatches and, like, fast expansions, you can still make shit faster than you can spend it as long as you understand what your priority of your resource is and what a resource priority is is it's pure mineral or it's gas so you're always going to mine mineral on either build either way but a pure mineral build is going to have very 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 low or literally no gas emphasis like for instance you're going to get zergling speed and then take drones off gas that is a mineral build where it is all minerals and you're just getting speedlings for like the first five minutes of the game until you're at like 60 supply. That's a build that's like queens, overlords, zerglings, drones, lots of minerals. That build can afford shit like fast mineral additions, like another expansion at a third base really fast, which is going to create more mineral expenses. If your build has gas consistently through it, a gas priority, if you're just not going to stop mining gas, and you're going to take more of them as well. This kind of a build does not make sense to go with a mineral priority build. It is not a mineral priority build anymore. This is now a gas priority build. And gas priority builds are tech builds and rush builds. And what did you do with your layer? You took a layer that is a tech build. What did you do with your gas? You took a lot of it that, cons that coincides with a gas build. You never took your drones off gas either. You always had at least two or three drones on this gas the entire time. That is a gas build. And you also took a gas early too. But you took a third base and you're making drones for a third base. This does not coincide with a gas build. The only way this would make sense now with a gas build would be if one of the two things I said earlier, tech build or all in. If you were not going to use this for minerals and make drones at this base and make a bunch of queens and do all that shit. If instead all you were going to do is make a bunch of lings and make banes, that would be fine. 
you could do that then. That, that would make sense because it's an all in. You're using this for literally like a barracks at that point then. It's just more production for more lings. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because <clears throat> what you're doing is you're trying to develop a macro build with two different kinds of builds. You're trying to go literally with a mineral priority build and a gas priority build. And it, all, if, if you do that, you have all you're doing is you're taking your mineral priority build and you're weakening it because you're adding gas gas to it. And you're not using any benefit of what gas priority gives you. Because another way to explain it to what give the, the benefits of what the builds are. A mineral build is very greedy and it gives you a fuckload of control of bases on the map fast. A gas build gives you, and that's defensive control. That's what that is. That's that's defensively postured control is what mineral focus builds give you. It gives you a lot of terrain on your side of the map really fast. A gas priority build gives you a lot of control on their side of the map really fast. It gives you tech builds and it gives you all in builds. And you're prioritizing gas while expanding fast, which means you're not going to have enough gas investment now. And like you're, uh, you're, you're uh, like you're, you're delaying your tech and you're delaying your, your gas units. So you're having no control on their side of the map. But at the same time, you're not also rushing your tech either. Like you're not, so you're not all winning him is what I'm saying. And you're not rushing your tech fast enough either to have like this really quick muta timing or this really quick like lurker timing or whatever. You're not doing anything with tech and you're not doing anything with all in aggressively to him. And that all that means is you're trying to do a mineral focus build because you're playing defensively and you're delaying your mineral build because you're disrupting it multiple times. As we talked about, you're just disrupting your defensive build is all you're doing too like too early. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting like the worst of both builds. Yes, you're doing two different builds together and it's making both builds suck now. Okay. Yeah, that's something I'll definitely need to change up. <coughs> Our drones are under attack. And then if something like this happens to you, so your build is already behind. Like you're, you are already behind where you'd want to be at this point in the game. And... If you, like, and you have, again, as we talked about earlier, I we, we, this is something we, we stated a minute ago, you should already have safety roaches at this point in the game, and that should already have been a thing for you. And then your safety roach, it was before even the one hellion was there. And that would have been normal for your build if you would have done the tech rush build, which is what beta GM is, which turns into greed after. Like, it's, it's it, so you can't take, like, it's a very safe build is what it is. Again, the build is... Uh, I do the build repeatedly every single game over and over and over, so it's constantly there. It's not. It does not change at all throughout the series of Bronze the Plat. But uh, if you had roaches right now, you could defend yourself and not disrupt your larva. But because you're double negative right now, you not only don't have roaches, but you also have been disrupted on your build, so you're, you're, you can't protect your economy that is already behind. And now you're going to take damage to it as well. Which means you're like triple behind now. Because the larva, again, should never be like this. It should be zero as much as possible. You should Again, you should, roaches should be able to deal with this right now. And now you're going to lose drones on top of this. So now, if you look at this right here, you're actually behind a Terran in workers when you're going for a build that is designed for you to be overwhelming Terran with workers and supply overall. You're not going for some crazy technical build of like Viper Hydra Infester. You're going for literally fucking mass roaches and mass hydras. And the only way a build like that works is when your supply is 200 and their supply is like 120. Because Terran and Protoss, Zerg can do it, but Terran and Protoss can't do it like Zerg can. Roaches and Hydras can scale and inflate your supply really fast because, here's why, those units suck ass. But they're really easy to make really fast, so they're, they're, their power is in numbers, not in what they can do. It, they're swarming units. But if you actually have, like, similar supply to Terran, and Terran's making a bunch of fucking tanks, and you're making Roaches, you're absolutely going to die. Because a tank 
is worth its weight way fucking more than a roach is per supply. Because that unit takes a lot longer to make, which means if you're not surpassing Terran supply there and they're making something that's better than you, which is more expensive than you, it means that you're having some fundamental macro problems, which is what we've talked about so far. Because there are two types of units in StarCraft 2. Just because your supply is higher doesn't mean your army is more powerful in terms of, like, or if your supply is the same, it doesn't mean you guys are equally, is equal is what I mean. I'm trying to say there. The, the, the way that's described is, is in StarCraft 2, if you, if you have a unit that is two supply and costs 200 resources, and you have another unit that is also two supply and costs 100 resources, those units do not have the same level of power. That does exist in this game as well, by the way. There is not a perfect balance to cost and supply in this game. There is a balance that is alternative to that, which is investment of time to power of unit. That is where the real balance lies. So more powerful armies take longer to make and more shitty armies are faster to make. So roaches and hydras are really easy to make really fast, which means... In theory, they're pretty fucking terrible. But they they will feel really powerful if you have massive supply advantages, which is what you should be able to get off if your opponent's not doing something like going Mass Hellion. Mass Hellion is Terran's equivalent to, like, Mass Roaches. But if, you're, but if he's not doing that, if he's going, like, tanks, like these you can see here, and you're also down in supply. Oh, this, there's yeah. lots of problems there. Like that, that again. Then all the problems are all the reasons why we've Over already talked two about. Two years of love, smile. You, like for right now, my opinion of where you should be, your build should be is you should honestly right now already be like at 80 plus supply, already, and by like you should be able to max out with this build in platinum by like nine minutes. And at nine minutes, th at the rate you're going, I feel like you're going to be at probably like 130 supply or 140 supply at nine minutes. I suspect you'll be right on that. Yeah, it's it's just you're scaling slowly because your build's not optimal at all. <coughs> we evolved. Stop you made another queen. Nice. And then like right now you definitely should be spreading creep. Uh your 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 creep spread is decent. Honestly, your, I would say your creep spread's your best part of your gameplay. Honestly, like for yeah. real. I I think it's the thing I practiced the most when I first started, and then I didn't do much with it because I couldn't make the army to actually use it. Sure. Definitely don't stop doing that. Try to keep maintaining this. Like, try to keep yeah. doing this while you fix the rest of the problems in your base. Your injects, uh, I would say, could use a little bit of work, but they're not terrible. Um, I, feel like, I feel like your life will become a lot easier if you just simply have the safety units at the right time and then you don't get distracted because you can just go, hey, safety units, A, move that area. Because you're not using safety units at all here. You're literally just foregoing that whole concept, which means that you're now going to create distractions for yourself every time you get attacked by anything and it's going to make your macro go in the fucking garbage can every time something attacks you until it's gone. And that means you're going to have multiple disruptions in your build every time anything harasses you, which is really bad. So definitely fix that part of your gameplay by understanding when to make safety units. And I already, I, so just to break it down, I, there's, again, definitely watch some of my beta GM. Uh, like if you, I'm guaranteeing, if you pick any game I played out of Platinum League in 2021 beta GM, you'll get the perfect example every time. I did it exactly the same every game. It wasn't random. And just to say it what it is really fast, your first safety roaches come out and you make six or eight of them the second your natural mineral line and gas are fully saturated. So 16, three, three. You're immediately making riches. And you make anywhere between six or eight. I don't give a shit what number you make. Make somewhere around six or eight. Do not make like 12 though. Do not make like three. Because if you make too many, it slows down your economy. And if you make too little, it makes your A move not really able to deal with a lot of times, a lot of types of pressure. Your roaches will probably just die. So, six to eight. As soon as you're fully saturated on the natural. And then immediately go back into drones. Immediately. And then you do, you do not make units again until you are at 66 drones. And you can tell your drone count if you mouse over top right. The second you hit 66, you go right back to making hydras and roaches. 
Make whatever the fuck you want. You can make Hydras if you don't know what the Terran's doing. Make Hydras if you know the Terran's going air. You can make Roaches as well if you know he's not going air. It does, I don't give a shit what you make. Just make either, uh, something. Just spin your larva. That's the most important part. Up to 120 supply. So now you'll have 66 drones and 120 supply in total, which means the remainder of that is Queen and Roach and Hydra, whatever. And then as soon as you're at 120 supply, you drone back again to 80 to 85. Anywhere in that realm. Like, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be in the ballpark area. 80 to 85 drones. And then you go max units for the rest of the fucking game. Hydra Roach, Hydra Roach, Mass Hydra, Mass Hydra, whatever makes sense. Just fucking max, 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 max. And if you do this with good larva usage, you should be able to never have larva sitting on the hatcheries ever the entire game until you max out. And the way to understand that is by understanding how to develop priority of resource. And priority of resource is 18 pool, 20 gas. As soon as you have your first inject spent, you make Roach Warren plus Evo. Then you immediately make double gas right after. And then saturate them later once your mineral line is fully saturated. So you, fi you fully fix this to 16. And then excess drones that you keep making go into the gas. Mineral priority. You don't prioritize ripping drones off and having 11 out of 16 while having 6 out of 6 here. You make sure this is priority first. And then on the third base, 16 out of 16. And when you're at about, like, let's say 10 or 12, you can start the gases. That way, when they're finished, you'll be at 16 out of 16 and you can fill up the gases. And then as soon as you take these gases, you take this final gas in your main as well. Uh, because, again, you don't want to disrupt the mineral line as long as possible in your main. Because you, you, ideally, that's the mineral line you're spreading your drones out perfectly on. So you take one gas, then two gases, then three gases at once, if that makes sense. And you do that off of drone counts of this is 20 supply. This is going to be around like 10 supply on this mineral line or 10 drones on the mineral line, which is when your first inject got spent. And then this one's going to be, again, around 10 supply on the mineral line, which is when you're having a lot of fucking drones cranking like crazy. And then your fourth base. At that point, when you go from 66 drones to like 80 to 85, you can genuinely, with your first round of drones you make for the hatchery, you can grab them while they're in transit and make gases right away. And the reason why that would make sense for that one is because you're making drones with so much fucking larva at that point off of so many bases that you're going to instantly saturate this base in like one inject. With one automated round of larva plus one inject, so like 30 seconds of larva usage is going to like fully saturate that base essentially. It's going to go really quick. So does that make sense? Yeah. Um, there's something else going on at the same time for the the one, two, three of the gases being built. Um, during the two gas being built, is that also when you're building the Roach Warren and the yes. Evo Chamber? Yeah. So that you're spending four drones at that time. Uh huh. Okay, cool. So I just want to make sure it's on the same page. Make sure, though, don't fuck this up. Make sure you do not make those buildings before you spend your larva. The first inject, the, the, so the first queen spawns. Inject, inject. Larva inject is happening. Inject pops off the hatchery. You now have six larva, three per hatchery sitting on the ground, which is 300 minerals to spin that if you're basing that off of drones because each drone is 50 minerals. You're not going to be able to afford making these buildings and spinning that larva at the same time. You will not if you're not okay. fucking your injects up. So gotcha. you're going to have I'll a... Be building you need to the buildings you, like intermittently. You need to build the buildings after you spin the larva. You'll generate the money really fast, but if you spin the larva first and then you go, all right, two drones, run over here. Roach Warren Evo, all right, two more drones, gas, gas. That's how, it, that's how it's done. And then you continue to spin larva. But do not, I'm just telling you, do not fucking make this Roach Warren in the Evo and your injects like 75% of the way done. And then you're like, all right, now I have two gases started and my Roach Warren and my Evo and my inject just popped off. And you're like, I can now spend one out of six larva and I have 72 or like 75 minerals and you're like, all right, well, I don't have any money. I can't spin that. And now your build's fucked up because now you have five larva sitting there and these fast ass Roach Warren Evo Chamber and gases 
And then if you fuck your build up even further, where you rip off the mineral line, and now you, let's say you have like six out of 16, and three out of three, three out of three on the gases, you're going to have a terrible economy. And that once again goes back to a gas priority because you're prioritizing tech with military and gas over mineral line. Just remember, never fucking disrupt larva because what do larva represent? Overlords and drones. And overlords and drones never get disrupted because on mineral lines because they are mineral priority builds. This is a product of mineral priority, and this is a product of mineral priority. It's all mineral priority. You just need to understand what your build is. And this build gotcha. is a defensive macro build. It is a mineral priority build. Our army be scrapped. All right, so your opener definitely is rough uh as we talked about and that's uh, yeah definitely fix that and you the rest of your game is going to feel a lot better uh because like i was saying before right about now you should be maxing out you like in a, uh like it, right around 8:45 to like nine minutes 8:45 is fast for plat nine minutes is average for plat in my opinion that's like if you're doing the build if you're actually on like the right track of the build Nine minutes is the average max for Platinum. And right now, you're at 120 supply at nine minutes. And in terms of damage you've taken, you've taken a bit. And a big reason why you've taken this damage, like this Liberator just killed eight units. It's whatever. But it, the, the Marines that dropped earlier killed a lot of your shit too. And it's because you had no safety units. Like you just didn't have shit there. And now when this Liberator is attacking you, once again, you have 11 Larva, which means you're not paying attention to your Larva. And that's why... To, to harken back a second ago, or to like er earlier in this lesson, when I was talking about how many times every 10 seconds you should be trying to make shit out of your larva, and I was like, even once is like not great. You should be like multiple times, like three, two or three, maybe four, I don't know, like doing it like every two to three seconds. You should literally go like this. Oh, something is attacking me. I have identified what that is. It is a liberator. That took me one second to do that. Because I go, I'm getting attacked. Okay, it's a lib. All right, queens, A move the area. You don't have to You don't have to precisely click the liberator. Just A move the ground. That's fine. And then ignore that fucking thing. Literally stop paying attention to it. Don't even look at it anymore. Immediately go back to uh, spinning your larva. And just going, okay. Inject my hatcheries, inject my hatcheries, spin my larva. Spread some creep, spin my larva, spread some creep, spin my larva, spread creep, spin my larva, spread creep, spin my larva, spread creep, spin my larva. You literally need to try spinning larva, like rotating it into like every other task. And you don't have to do this all game. You just have to do this in the development of the game. Because if you don't do this in the development of the game, oh, you're going to have very yeah. bad macro. Like it's going to fall off all the time. Happy Friday, fam. So, you need to get in the habit of really alternating spin my larva, do something. Spin my larva, do something. Inject all my hatcheries, spin my larva. Spread my creep, spin my larva. Make a gas, spin my larva. Make a gas, or make a roach horn, spin my larva. Uh, make a layer, spin my larva. Make an overlord go right there, spin my larva. Make another overlord over here, spin my larva. Make a creep tumor, spin my larva. Inject my hatchery, spin my larva. Make an upgrade, spin my larva. Literally has to alternate everything. You can do, so you can do like rounds of tasks where I'm not saying inject larva, inject larva, inject larva. It could be like inject, inject, inject. Because injecting all three of your hatcheries ideally shouldn't take you 10 seconds. I should take you at most two seconds. Spin larva after. Now spreading your creep is a bit longer of a task sometimes because it's the entire fucking map when it gets to a good amount. And you have to sometimes spread like 20 fucking tumors. That can definitely take you longer than injecting three hatcheries. So you definitely need to try to spend your larva in the middle of spreading your creep every now and again. Like, spread it four tumors, spend larva. Like, you should always just be thinking to yourself, every three seconds, larva, 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 larva. It should be something that never goes off your mind. Like, like for now, it's actively thought about, actively thought about, actively thought about. And it's going to make your hand literally go, one SD, one SD, one SD, one SD, one SD, one SD, so fucking often... That once you really do it for like a month or like months of this, you're going to be like, all right, uh, what is he doing, 1SD? Okay, I'm scouting his base, 1SD. I'm looking for the uh, the starport, 1SD. Okay, he took a gas, 1SD. He took a third command center, 1SD. 
It's just going to become muscle memory for you. You're going to be like, cool, I'm fucking making drones like crazy. Oh, he's attacking me with the Reaper. Ling's attack, 1SD. Queen move over there, 1SD. Queen attack that, 1SD. Pull back a drone, 1SD. Make a spore color, 1SD. It needs to be automated for you. It's the only way you're going to be able to start learning how to multitask. It was, is with... Because I'm going to tell... Here's, here's a trick to everyone out there for StarCraft that's learning how to play this game. Nobody has 500 IQ and thinks about 40 things at once. Nobody does that. So just, disclaimer alert. No one is that good at, at, with their brain. The, the power of the human brain is that your subconscious plays more StarCraft than your conscious. And you need to make that happen over time. You need to develop that. You can't just do that immediately. Conscious is something you can do today. Subconscious is something you do through repetition next week or next month. And what StarCraft 2 about mastering this game is it's about actively using your conscious brain to do something so much that it becomes a subconscious task that you just do indirectly forever. It becomes something you actively don't have to use your brain for anymore because you just look at something and just your your body goes, I do that. If you jump into a pool of water, what are you going to do? You're going to fucking swim in it. You know how your body knows how to swim. You know how to react to that situation. If I have fucking, if I'm sitting in Zerg in StarCraft, I fucking go 5SD or 1SD all the time because that's what my body does. It is subconsciously done. It is not something I think about every three seconds. What I am thinking about in StarCraft 2 is a lot of what my opponent is doing once I'm really good at the game because my subconscious does all my macro because the macro is repetitive. It is always the same thing. Like, for instance, if you jump into a pool of water, you're not going to fall to the bottom because sometimes water doesn't have buoyancy. Water always has buoyancy, just like StarCraft 2 macro is always the same fucking thing. It is static. It is not a, it's not a changing aspect. But... If I'm gonna if I'm gonna battle someone in StarCraft 2, that is not a static entity. That is someone that has options. That is someone that can do something different every game. So you will eventually get to a point where you have to actively think about what is he doing? Because it doesn't have to be the same as everybody else. But you don't have to think about how do I inject a hatchery? Because that is literally fucking the same thing every game. It doesn't ever change. So that is about how learning how to multitask. It's about allocating repetitive tasks, repetitive tasks to your multi, uh, Jesus. It's about allocating repetitive tasks to your subconscious and about using, uh, alleviating your brain to think about the non-static tasks that at hand that can happen in a game. But you're not there yet. You're in Platinum League and anyone else who's in Platinum League shares this dilemma. You need to get to the point where you automate yourself so much that your body just does it. And uh, yeah, the, the way we talked about is how you do it. Uh, throughout the game. So, I will quickly go through the rest of this game now, but this game is so fucked. <laughs> but do you have any questions so far? Uh, curiosity. Much love, man, so far. No new questions. Okay. Uh, I think you've answered them all. Okay. So, for now, I just want you to know that this game... You're playing extra, extra, extra hard mode now. So, this game is, yeah. a, this game is a platinum game, but it's going to feel like you're playing against a Masters player from now on. Because I think this is a game I win, and I sure. still don't know how that happened. Sure, it's it's like it's it's it, it the same thing applies to your opponent as well. If their if their build development is really bad, it's gonna feel really hard either way. Uh, it, like again, your early game takes the pace for your late game, so it's just how it goes. Okay, so what I would prefer you to do this is what I prefer you to do. I don't like how you're sending your entire army to. Uh, did you actually scout one rush? I want to see. I want to make sure you didn't do it. So you use your whole army to kill the rocks. You went forward. You poked the base. You, you then went for Yeah, so you used your whole army. I do not like this at all. You do not want to attack with your army in Terran's territory until you are maxed out. Having a sub-max with this is literally defeating the purpose of how this army is effective. It's just like we talked about with your economy, with how you're doing two builds at once and it doesn't make sense. This build is most effective at the supply peak of the game because this build maxes really fast. You get to that supply peak really quickly. So you want to maximize your power by maximizing your supply peak as fast as possible. And if you attack early, 
you're missing 25 fucking units that could be here essentially in terms of supply. Really, it's 24, but yeah. Because it's a lot of, it's two supply per unit and you're missing 50 fucking supply essentially. You're missing 48, but yeah. It's a lot. It's a shitload. It's a big chunk of your army that is not there. So you want to make sure you're using that as effective as you can. So right now, what you should be doing is like one roach out of, because one roach is very sacrificable. If it dies, you don't even know it's dead. It's so easily replaceable. This is a lot to replace. This is fucking 19 units. This is equivalent to uh, 38 supply. That's a lot of fucking supply that you would have to spend time replacing. So if your roach runs into a bad situation, the one roach, but you scout no base, no base, no base, no base, there's a base. And another roach goes no base, no base, no base, base, or whatever. You see where the edges of his bases are with one roach that can easily be replaced, and then you attack the furthest, most exposed base Terran has, which is further out for the furthest out on the map. That's just it. Because there's less shit there that Terran's going to have set up. Like, no walls, no tanks on cliffs, just open exposed bases, which means it's easier to kill his army. So, I don't like this at all. You definitely don't do that anymore. Try to stop doing that. One roach to scout and call it a day. And then... Also, when you attack someone, you want to make sure, too, when you that the second you max, you fucking go as well. So, like, you're maxing out at... Uh, it's, come on. It's still going. Okay. You're pretty much maxing out at, nine, uh, at 1040 in terms of units you just made, essentially. More or less. Now, that, that again, that's super late max. It should have been, like, over almost, like, almost two minutes ago. But the second these units pop out, group them up and attack. That's what it should be. Because, again, you want your whole army to be together and full power push. Now, if you push this base over here before your army's grouped up, it doesn't make any sense. And right now you're pushing with a half army, essentially. This Right here, this is only uh, 11 roaches and, and 18 hydras. So 11 and 18 is uh, 39. Or 29, sorry, I cannot do math. 11 and 18 is 29. This is 29 units in total. And 29 units in total is 58 supply. This is a 58 supply army attacking Terran. When a lot of your other units, you have... Uh, it's exactly that amount. Yeah, 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 you have a lot of other units just f fucking in eggs and yeah. over here. Like a lot of queens as well. This also disrupts your supply. With Beta Gym, you do not want to have an excess amount of queens. This is, again, a speedling style thing to do. This is not a Beta Gym thing to do. With Beta Gym, you want to have four queens max. You literally make three queens per hatchery and one queen, to, one queen to spread creep. And then once you have a shitload of creep, you can take that fourth queen and inject the fourth hatchery eventually just to have more larva. That's all it is. So you have way too much supply. And also, how many drones do you have? You have 77. That's good. That's fine. Your drone supply is fine. But now, this has a higher chance to just die. Now, you kill the base, right? You kill the base. However, you lost a shitload of resources for that, to kill that base. That, 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 this is a situation where that was a resource disadvantageous fight for you, but it is a territorial advantageous fight for you. And the only time that kind of a fight makes sense is if you capitalize and you never fucking let them take this base again and you keep starving them until they die. So if you keep breaking bases like this and he never gets to set up economy, it still makes sense to play like that. But if you take a fight like that and it is super wasteful and then he just sets it back up and then you don't really capitalize on the advantage of the fact that you have more income than he does coming in per minute, it, that it doesn't make sense. And you just, you'll just run out of money eventually and die. That, again, that's a concept that's a little bit above Platinum League. You shouldn't be thinking about that. Just think, I always need to attack when my army's together. This is way too early to make lurkers as well. You're, you're going way above what Platinum is supposed to be. I feel like you you feel like as well you might have to play like this because games sometimes don't go your way when you go Roach Hydra, but you're breaking so many fucking rules with your economy earlier that we talked about, and you just broke a massive rule as well with your army by walking a big chunk of it into the Terran's base repeatedly until you found him, and then you literally attacked him with only half your army when you were maxed out because you did you just went before the other half was even there. And you're doing yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah. Like I'm at a stage where I can't trade efficiently because he's ahead of me. Yeah. Uh, and it, yeah, you, you were so both I need like to make efficient units, but I can't micro them well enough to actually do that. Yeah, and 
You don't even want it. This army, you don't even want it to be in a situation where the Terran's maxed and you're maxed. That means you've already kind of failed. And you both were yeah. maxed already anyways. Yeah. Because you're, you're, another fight's happening in where half your army's fighting and like, army sitting there, army sitting there, army sitting there. This is so much units just not helping. And there, now the other half of your army's fighting. And now, how are you macroing behind this? How are your queens looking? Uh, fuckload of energy. That's five injects not happening. This is two injects right there, not happening. This is three injects right there, not happening. But th at least these, at least these hatcheries are injected. But yeah, that's ideally you'd want these queens to be like at less than fifty, like anywhere between like zero to fifty would be ideal. Because, uh, like, you're going to always go up to 25 no matter what because that's how long much it takes to make an inject. And going up between 25 to 50 means you're trying to make your inject hit again before the threshold of missing two injects. So you're, like, in the threshold of one inject, essentially. So if you can be anywhere below 50 in energy all the time on your queens, you're doing fucking great. Uh, and, yeah, like, your queens are getting kind of high. And the reason why they're getting kind of high is because you're microing lurkers. And you're trying to, like, micro your army a little bit. And it's not necessary. Like, I'm going to tell you right now, compositionally, Lurkers didn't make sense to go there against Siege Tanks. It just, uh, lurkers are awful against Siege Tanks. The only way Lurkers work against Tanks is with Viper. And the fucking last thing in the world you should use right now in Platinum League is Viper. It's going to make it even harder. That's a fucking... Even, even for, like, GM players, going Viper Lurker against Mech is even difficult sometimes because it requires really good timing and scouting uh, to use properly. It's really just another concept to, to keep in mind, too. A big one. Uh, this is probably the last concept we'll talk about. And we'll kind of skip to the end here. <coughs> the second you max out, <coughs> you should... This is a rule that you should... It's, it's similar to the, the larva rule I talked about earlier. Where if you ever hit four larva on one hatchery, you should feel like the game should just say defeat. And you just lose the game. Because your macro is not good enough yet. Another rule is, if you max out and you're playing this style... You should be able to remax within 15 seconds of your previous max. The, se the second your supply drops from 200, start the clock. And if you can't hit 200 again within 15 seconds, you should feel like you should just lose the game again. Because that means you're not allocating enough time to your macro. So you never really hit 200, but you could have because you have a fuckload of minerals. But let's just say like from like 1054 when this fight's going on, what is your supply going to be? At 11.09. It's going down. What's your larva at right now? It's two. What are your queen energy looks like? What is your, what's your queen energy look like? You have three queens there with fuckloads that are doing nothing. It's whatever. You can only inject one per time anyways on hatchery. So they're literally doing nothing. One queen can forever keep it in hatchery. Like forever inject it if you just monitor it enough. This queen has 80. This queen has 90. Neither one is injecting this hatchery. This queen has 34. This queen has 50. But the Satchery is at least injected. The Satchery has two queens. There's so many fucking queens. There's too many queens. Uh, this, que this queen has 125. And this queen has 34. Hatchery is injected though. The Satchery has not started yet. The Satchery has no injects at all at it. And has a queen as well. Like you're, you're, you're just not giving yourself enough larva. Like in general to work with by the fact that you're not really... I, I, I explained this already earlier, and I want to make sure you understand this. But Larva is like an assembly line that needs to be monitored repeatedly. And having Larva that sits on your hatcheries sucks. Having no Larva on your hatcheries is great. Because now you can actually get automated Larva, which means there's two assembly lines of, of Larva that just exist. And whenever you have three Larva on one hatchery, it just stops. It like unpowers itself, and it just ceases to do anything. But injects can always do something up until you have about 18 larva per hatchery. Because then that, that also stops because it caps out at that point in time. You can't go above 18 per hatchery. It just... Larva that, that beyond that point just die. But the only time you should ever have larva surpluses ever is when you are maxed out. And too many fucking times this game, you have had larva surpluses before you maxed out. So now you don't have a larva surplus when you are maxed out. Because the only way you could have a larva surplus now is with injects. Because automated larva can't do anything for you anymore. But now at this point, when you are maxed out, ideally, 
you would want to have like maybe your creep spreading queen would be doing your fourth base with inject because you would have a fucking bunch of tumors that are able to spread themselves like this and then you could have a fourth hatchery being injected by a fourth queen main natural third always be injected by other queens and then the Terran also wouldn't kill as much of your shit as fast because you wouldn't have as much time to make as big of an army as he did so your lar your units would last longer which means your larva would not be used up as fast anymore when you're creating larva surpluses and you ideally at this point now at 11 minutes to, if you were playing this correctly you should have like 30 larva sitting with 200 supply and like 30 or 40 larva sitting there ready to be used that's what it should look like but it should never be like 30 or 20 larva or something in high double digit numbers before you max out. It should always be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 because you're maximizing getting to that point as fast as possible to give yourself the biggest power spike. That's like the real concept of how this build is supposed to operate. And now every attack is going to feel difficult because the turret's always going to have so much in general. Another concept, too, to throw at you really fast is two-minute rule, okay? This is a quota. A, a, a quota of your creep and of your expansions. Uh, and this is probably the last thing we'll talk about. We'll probably end it here because, uh, actually, this we've gone over. I, I also I got to do some shit in a minute here. Uh, and I want to give you time to ask, ask questions and shit, and I'll, I'll wrap it up. But, yeah. But uh, a two-minute rule of hatcheries is and creep is you should be able to have another base started every two minutes. So... Don't think about your natural. Natural is always the same thing. Don't take it exactly at two minutes, okay? But by two minutes, this hatchery should be started. And it's going to be started at like 16 or 17 supply. And that's fine. By four minutes, this space should pretty much be starting. By six minutes, another base. By eight minutes, another base. By 10 minutes, another base. By 12 minutes, another base. By 14 minutes, another base. You're already two bases behind where you should be as well. Because think about it like this too. You're not even at ideal saturation. You're like probably like three to eight drones below where you should be. And you're oversaturated. You pull drones off, which is good. You pull drones off, which is good. You're oversaturated. You're, you're just starting this one. And you're fully saturated. Like it's, you're like you're, you're barely able to maintain what you have, and you're you're only gonna lose patches again. Like this base is gonna start losing patches here really soon too. Like a hundred, two hundred, one hundred eighty. It's already lost one of its patches. Like the bases will start depleting in themselves quickly. This base only has three hundred. It, like it's the the bat the patches are gonna start disappearing. Every eight minutes, a patch disappears off of the close patches. That's just how that goes with economy. That's how the, the, the timing lines up on those bases. So if you don't expand fast enough, you're going to have lopsided economies that develop over time where shit just doesn't add up properly. Uh, and also, the faster you expand, the more larva you have. It's like a double whammy positivity thing. <coughs> and a quota as well, like I said. Remember how I just said a second ago? Uh, there's a creep quota that goes with it too. So you're totally missing the hatchery quota. But look at your creep. You should have a base there. And to understand if your creep is good or bad, every time you take a base, creep should already be covering the base before you take it. You should never be taking a base like this. That means your creep sucks dick. If you take a base like this, your creep is amazing. Good shit. So your creep is good. Your creep is the best part of your gameplay, as I said before. This would already be covered in creep. Good job. All your other bases are covered in creep. Well done. This base is barely covered in creep, which means you're starting to fall behind the quota because you should have taken this a minute ago at 12 minutes. So if we go back to 12 minutes, what did the creep look like? Oh, you're still same place, right? You haven't spread it in a long time. So this creep is like barely making the quota. You're touching it, which means it's like barely acceptable. But ideally, you want to have creep covering the base. And then at 14 minutes, you'd want to take this base, which would ideally mean you'd have creep not only in front of it, but like on top of it and like pushing forward. So that's huge to understand that. That is, those are timers that tell you if you're playing poorly or effectively uh, with your build. Like if you're falling behind or not. I think that two base rule will really help me figure out where I'm making that error. Yeah, no, it's, it's a pacing rule. It's, it's, it's like, it's just, it, it's a guideline to tell you if you're just playing slow or not. Yeah. 
man. You're you're spending way too much fucking time uh, on your army. This is not necessary. And again, you never want to make lurkers against Terran if they have tanks. Just don't even bother. Literally just slam Terran over the fucking head with roaches and hydras. And instead of thinking about how do I beat his army, think about how do I beat his economy. So oh, a cool way you could do this would be, here's a cool example. If you want to do something that has some semblance of any type of micro, but very basic at the same time, what if you sent like 20 roaches over here? Just like 20 roaches. And you attack this area. And as the roaches die, because they're going to die, you just hold down the make roach key. And that's it. And your roaches are instantly being replaced as they die. And a roach build time is really fast. It's only 17 or 19 seconds. So it doesn't. It, they're rebuilt super fucking fast. But the Terran got distracted by you attacking one side of the one entire other side of the map. And you pull them over here. And then you attack the complete opposite side with your entire army now. When he's on the top right, now you attack bottom left with everything. And you kill a base when he's out of position. You will break his economy over time. And again, that's fucking fancy what I just said. You don't even have to do that. You could just max out, attack the right side. Max out, attack the left side. Max out, attack the right side. Max out, attack the left side. Literally, it's that simple. Because if you are macroing properly, you're never going to be like that. Neither one of you are macroing well this game, which is why the game is even like this. This is a genuine Platinum versus Platinum game. Neither one of you have macro above Platinum level right now. But if you develop your macro and you get to a level where it's going to promote you to Diamond League, which means you're macroing above Platinum, you're going to crush people that macro like this. Fucking easy. As we talked about earlier, you would have been 200 supply when he would have been 100 instead of being tied with him the entire game. Because you could have been 200 at 9 minutes when he was at 100, not both of you being at 100. So, I hope everything I just, yeah. I just said makes sense, but... Yeah, absolutely. I, know I definitely I, knew yeah. I was weak, but I didn't know how bad it was. Sure. Uh, uh, yeah. So, this is good. I'll be very busy this next few weeks trying to improve it. Oh, yeah, man. I, uh, I know I talked a lot, and I know I, know I talked super fast, because uh, I try to get as much information out there as possible. That's oh, awesome. it's perfect. Yeah. It's appreciated. Yeah, nice. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, uh, I thanks for doing uh, the lesson. Um, I know the game's about to end here, and you are, like, breaking this guy with lurkers. And I'm, I know you win this game, as you said. Yeah. But, yeah, <laughs> this is this is so much time spent on just trying to set shit up. This is something that probably – I uh, didn't mean to do that, but, yeah. Probably something that should be more – play. this kind of a play style happens more when you can handle it more and when you can handle it is shit like you're not having queens with max energy, like high ass. And this queen, this actually doesn't have a queen at it. Uh, where I don't know where all the queens. Are. I think you only have two queens now. You have four. Uh, I think he attacked me at some point, and I used the queens to defend and sure. tank for the hydras. Okay, but yeah, like a lot of these queens, like so much energy, which just tells me, uh, like the, the creep energy, not that big of a deal because you have nice creep spread overall. You don't have to. You don't have to always keep planting creep when your creep is good already, anyways. That could become injectors at that point. But the injectors, this just tells me you're not injecting often at all. And you're missing that yeah. quite often. So that's a huge thing you can fix in your gameplay too. But yeah, the, fact that sure. you, the fact that you have a lot of larvae there, that's what it should look like when you're maxed out. So you can instantly remax. Instantly remax. Instantly remax. And you can generate so much larvae so fucking fast if you're actually keeping on top of your larvae injects like crazy uh, yeah. at late game. But yeah, cool. any, anyways, I would say last thing... Homework for you if you need any type of a reference. Definitely go check out my YouTube series of 2021 B2GM for Zerg and Platt if you need any type of a time guideline because that they're, they're all uh, uh, relative to what I just told you just now. Like, I will max out at nine minutes in those games. Yeah, I've got in my notes that I want to rewatch the Platt 2 one just so I can sure. have a better visual on what it should look like. Yeah. For sure. And uh, like you'll notice too, like things that I told you now might make more sense. Like you'll notice your gas is really early compared to mine. And yeah. your roach warrant is super fucking late. Stuff like that. Uh, but anyways, dude, uh, much love. I'll upload this by tomorrow and uh, I'll have this. Um, I'll, I'll message you privately in Discord and I'll, like, I'll send you the link directly so you don't have to search right. for it and everything. And then yeah, I'm subscribed to your YouTube channel, so I should just get notified. That you'll get that too. Fuck yeah. I'll, I'll send it to you anyways, just because it's what I do. But uh, right, Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, man. And have a good rest of your night, and I appreciate you. Yeah, you doing too. This. All right. Take care. All right. Later, dude. All right, guys. 
That has been a coaching lesson with Curiosity. Curiosity, much love. Sorry, I uh, I got like a little bit quick there at the end. I know he said he appreciated it or he liked it anyways, but uh, yeah, I gotta I got something else I gotta do right now, uh, schedule wise. So much love. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. Um, have a great night, everybody. Uh, take it easy. Good luck in your games, and I'll see you next time. Peace, guys.